Shooting film is definitely a trend right now and it is not looking to slow down anytime soon. And as a film shooter myself, I have my fair share of trying out different 35mm film cameras since I started shooting film 4 years ago as well as owning some of them. In this video, I'll be talking about all the 35mm film cameras I own, the price of it, the photos I've made with it, and if you should buy them. But before I actually begin, I just would like to talk about some modes that these film cameras have that I'll be mentioning throughout the video just to, you know, avoid any confusion for any of you guys who might not be familiar with them. Program mode, the mode where the camera decides the shutter and aperture for you. This means the camera will do all the thinking for you and all you have to do is point the camera and shoot, which makes the camera kind of a point and shoot. Shutter priority mode. The mode where the camera adjusts the aperture automatically based on the shutter speed selected by the user. This is normally denoted as TV on most film cameras which stands for time value. Aperture priority mode. The mode where the camera adjusts the shutter speed automatically based on the aperture selected by the user. This is normally denoted as AV on most film cameras which stands for aperture value. Manual mode. This is when both the aperture and shutter speed are set by the user. This is not denoted by any letter. You are in manual mode by simply setting the aperture and shutter speed on the camera. Let's start with the Pentax K1000. The K1000 is my first official film camera even though I bought it at the same time with my Canon AE-1 program in Minolta X700. I say first because this was the first ever camera that I've ever used among the other two film cameras that I just mentioned. Also this camera is very beginner friendly. This does not even require a battery to operate which means this is a fully mechanical camera. Although this one is equipped with a light meter that requires a battery in case you need it. But if you have say an external light meter like an app on the phone or a standalone light meter like this, then you can just keep shooting with this camera as it is fully mechanical. Also this camera is fully manual which means the camera has no program mode. This camera is also very cheap and you can definitely find it for under $50 at your local thrift stores or even free in your grandma's basement. The Canon AE-1 program is definitely the best entry point film camera and it has everything you need as a beginner. This has a built-in light meter, program, aperture priority, and shutter priority modes. It also has a variety of good yet cheap lenses to choose from. This camera also requires a battery in order to operate. My personal favorite lens for my AE-1 is this 24mm f2.8 lens. I am yet to make more photos with it when the weather permits. This camera is also very cheap. But beforehand, I was able to find it at my local thrift stores but with the surge of people who want to shoot film, I recommend to find them on eBay or Facebook Marketplace which should still be relatively cheap. My love for the X700 has rooted from the OG himself, King Japes, who was primarily shooting with the Minolta X700 when I was starting out. Unfortunately, mine broke while I was shooting with it. I wasn't sure what caused it but the mirror got stuck as you all can see here. So if any of you guys who might know the issue, let me know if this is still fixable. If this camera did not break, this is definitely my most favored one. I just love how it looks and how it feels in the hand and that Minolta glass is definitely sharp. This camera is definitely a good starter camera as it is equipped with all you need as a beginner just like the Canon AE-1 program. It has a built-in light meter, program, aperture priority modes. And this camera requires a battery to operate and I definitely recommend this to anyone who is just starting out in film. I must say that this camera is too overrated hence the price and I am guilty that my decision was definitely steered by the hype. But I must also say that this camera is definitely amazing for what it does considering this was made in 1990 and now is 21 years old. This camera is fully automatic but one of the things that I like about this point and shoot is that it allows the user to select an aperture setting which I use all the time. It also allows the user to select the focus manually using this dial. 
but most of the time I leave it on AF or autofocus since the autofocus of this film camera is pretty good considering when it was made. Also the build quality of this camera is superb which is made out of titanium hence the name and most of all I love the sharpness of the 38mm Zeiss glass of the T2. But with its price tag, I don't recommend it simply because there are other point and shoot film cameras out there that are just as good and only a fraction of the price of the T2. Some of the ones that I know of are Olympus Mu2, Yashica T3, T4, or T5. But if you have the money, then suit yourself and get yourself a Contax T2 because you'll never regret. This film camera is definitely my all-in-one camera. This is a pro-grade film camera that I got two years ago as a gift from my parents. This camera has all the modern features of any modern DSLRs to date, only this camera shoots film. I love everything about this camera except its size because it is really huge and it does not look like a regular film camera that comes to mind when you say film camera. Also another gripe I have is that Canon glass is definitely expensive as this camera uses an EF mount which requires EF lenses which are on the pricier side. But my go-to lens is this 50mm f1.8 lens which you can get for more or less $100. Also this camera can be bought on eBay where I bought mine and the prices from when I bought it till today remains the same. So if you have the money and you are shooting 35mm film professionally for work or just a hobby, then I would totally recommend this camera. Also, I made a more in-depth video about this camera that you can check out as well. I love shooting film, hence the amount of cameras in my collection that I acquired through the years. One thing that I want to point out is that buying an expensive camera or gear does not make your photos good at all. Just because I was able to make good photos with a $1,000 camera, that does not mean you're not going to be able to make good photos with a $100 camera. At the end of the day, what matters, I think, is how you compose the images. So regardless of how expensive or cheap the camera is that you're using, the camera won't compose the images for you. Rather, you as the photographer will compose those images. And I don't want to make it sound like I know everything because I don't and I'm not a professional as well. So take what I said as an opinion because that's my opinion as a photographer and take it as you will. So with all the cameras that I just mentioned in this video, let me know in the comment section down below which among of those cameras would you be buying or at least which cameras do you own already and what do you think of them. So if you learned something out of this video and found it valuable, please leave a thumbs up as it helps the channel a lot. Also, if you're new here, thanks for dropping by and consider subscribing for more amazing videos in the future. Also, if you guys can definitely check out my work on Instagram as well as TikTok where I post fashion related content and all of those will be found in the description down below. So that's pretty much it and until next time, stay safe, peace.